How long will the journey to Enceladus take? The intriguing aspect of the moon has always captivated humanity. Whether it be the moon of Earth or the moons of Jupiter first observed by Galileo in 1609, these celestial objects hold the key to understanding our past. It is easy to locate these moons within our solar system, just take a brief look around. Jupiter and Saturn have numerous moons, but some are brighter than others. Consider Europa's dense ice crust and Titan's methane atmosphere. A select few of these moons are believed to conceal liquid water basins beneath their frozen surfaces. However one moon emits its ocean into space, enabling spacecraft to collect samples. This moon orbits Saturn and is named Enceladus. Scientists have determined from these samples that this natural satellite contains the requisite chemical components for life. Therefore, it is essential that we launch a mission to explore the moon. However, how long will this voyage take? Let us investigate. Hello everyone, welcome back to Z. If you are new to the channel, hit the subscription button and ring the bell so you don't miss any update. Enceladus's environment around Saturn. Some objects in the universe vary considerably in size, whereas others are considerably smaller. Enceladus, for instance, is comparable in width to Arizona, measuring approximately 310 miles or 500 kilometers. However, its bulk is not its most remarkable characteristic, rather, its surface is the most reflective in the entire solar system. Envision the whitest blanket you've ever seen, and then envision Enceladus' icy surface being even whiter. This makes it a fascinating topic for astronomers to research. But there's more. Saturn's moon also contributes to the construction of one of the planet's many rings. Enceladus ejects a spray of frozen particles into space around its orbit, forming the so-called E-ring of Saturn. Enceladus is without a doubt one of the coolest places in our solar system. Its exceptionally reflective surface results in a surface temperature of approximately minus 330 degrees Fahrenheit. Could you imagine it? Missions to Enceladus In the 1980s, the Voyager spacecraft discovered that despite Enceladus's diminutive size, certain regions of its icy surface were remarkably smooth and brilliantly white. This was unexpected because our moon is covered in craters, which allow us to comprehend its history and the history of the solar system. As Enceladus has been impacted by asteroids for millions of years, analogous features were anticipated. However, extensive regions of Enceladus were devoid of craters, leaving scientists perplexed for decades. Now we know that Enceladus, unlike our moon, is an active moon with geological resurfacing events. This means that its landscape undergoes significant alterations. A notable example is the South Pole region, which contains enormous ice boulders and distinctive tectonic patterns. After leaving Earth in 1977 and entering the Saturn system three years later, it took the Voyager spacecraft almost four years to acquire the finest image of Enceladus. The Cassini mission took significantly longer to reach Enceladus. Before reaching its destination, unlike Voyager, which took only three years, Cassini followed a complex trajectory and conducted flybys of other celestial bodies. After launch, Cassini made two flybys of Venus in 1998 and 1999 to alter its course to Saturn. In August of 1999, another close flyby of Earth increased its velocity. Cassini reached Jupiter in December 2000, where it gathered valuable data. On July 1, 2004, after four additional years of travel, Cassini finally arrived at Saturn. Cassini had multiple opportunities to investigate Enceladus up close and made significant scientific discoveries once it arrived in Saturn's neighborhood. It observed geysers of water vapor erupting from the south pole of the moon, providing evidence of an ocean beneath its frozen crust. Additionally, Cassini detected an excess of heat emanating from the South Pole, indicating ongoing geological activity. These findings indicated the existence of energy sources within Enceladus, which could explain phenomena such as geysers and the maintenance of a subsurface ocean. Despite the lengthy journey, seven years of space travel were well worth the wait. Cassini's findings opened up new avenues for the study of Enceladus, and now significant efforts are being made to dispatch another mission to this moon. 
the Orbilander mission appears particularly intriguing. This mission would spend a year and a half orbiting Enceladus and collecting samples of its water vapors before landing on the planet's surface for a two-year mission to search for signs of life. Then how long will this take? If you're fortunate enough, you might see both the launch and descent of the Orbilander. The former could occur as soon as 2038, putting the latter in 2051. It would take approximately 13 years to depart Earth, reach Enceladus, and land on it. In particular, the spacecraft would be launched directly into the outer solar system in 2040 and the probe would rely solely on Jupiter's gravitational influence to alter its trajectory and orientation. The space spacecraft is expected to enter orbit around Saturn in September 2045, per the plan. In March 2050, after five years of orbiting the gas giant and examining its other moons, the probe would enter a 12-hour halo orbit around Enceladus. This orbit would take the spacecraft over the south pole of Enceladus at a distance of 15.5 miles or 25 kilometers from the planet's surface. Over the course of 1.5 years, the spacecraft would repeatedly collect samples from the moon's geysers. The probe would descend on the surface of Enceladus in September 2051 for a two-year primary mission during which it would collect soil samples for analysis. The probe's primary mission would conclude in October 2053, 15 years after its launch. However, there are intentions to expand the mission scope. Due to its distance from the Sun, it is imperative that the spacecraft be able to operate in a very frigid environment. Due to the possibility of life on the Moon Enceladus, the spacecraft is also designed to adhere to the strictest standards of planetary protection. Orbilander Mission Why then launch so late in the 2030s? This allows for improved lighting conditions at the south pole of Enceladus during the scientific phase and provides more time to ensure the requisite power systems are in place. As you may recollect, the south pole of Enceladus is the true protagonist of this tale as its surface displays very intriguing geological features. There is much activity there. As stated previously, a direct path with a little assistance from Jupiter's gravitation is chosen to reach Saturn. This maneuver attempts to conserve fuel by omitting the inner cruise phase, during which the spacecraft would be flying steadily at a high altitude. When the spacecraft arrives at Saturn, it will execute a specific maneuver that will reduce its velocity by 761 feet per second. This will presumably occur when the probe is approximately 2,400 kilometers or 1,490 miles above Saturn's surface. This maneuver assists in capturing the probe into a 158-day long orbit around Saturn. The spacecraft then executes a second maneuver in which it accelerates by 1984 feet per second at the peak of its orbit. This is done in preparation for a flyby of Saturn's moon Titan. This is a crucial part of the mission that must be executed with care. During this phase, the probe must be sufficiently removed from Titan to prevent contamination. The circumnavigation of Saturn's moons is complicated due to their low mass. To get near to them, the probe must perform a number of flybys and maneuvers in between. This will help conserve energy. The team is using specialized instruments to determine the optimal probe routes. These tools are being developed with the assistance of a NASA initiative titled Astrodynamics in support of Icy Worlds missions. This will aid not only this mission, but also future Enceladus missions. The moons will be circumnavigated as follows. First, the spacecraft will perform sequences of maneuvers using flybys of Titan, Rhea, Dion, and Tethys. This will increase its proximity to Enceladus. The spacecraft will then conduct a series of flybys close to Enceladus to get even closer. At this juncture, the probe will execute a significant maneuver to initiate the phase during which it will conduct scientific experiments. Science Orbit the Orbilander mission is expected to conduct scientific research for approximately one and a half years during a special phase. To accomplish this, it must be at specific altitudes, 12 to 60 kilometers, above Enceladus in order to capture various particles and gases. It is difficult to locate stable orbits at these altitudes near the South Pole. Some orbits require active management to prevent collisions with Enceladus. But have no fear. The Orbilander mission has a thoughtful strategy. It will use so-called halo orbits to reach the proper altitude for scientific research. These orbits are chosen due to their optimal altitudes near the South Pole. 
These orbits have a period of approximately 12 hours, making them suitable for regulating and maintaining the orbilander's position. Halo orbits are becoming increasingly significant, they will also be utilized in the impending Artemis program. A so-called NRHO was selected as the optimal Artemis architectural orbit to support the overall objectives of lunar south pole exploration and the design of feasible systems. Despite the lengthy delay, it is highly likely that the final design of the spacecraft will evolve from the concepts detailed in the initial study. Nonetheless, this endeavor represents a potential chance to achieve one of the most significant scientific advances in history. I eagerly anticipate what the future holds. What do you think? What are your impressions of Enceladus? Share your thoughts in the comments, and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. See you again soon.